Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire, and I'm really excited to be a guest here at W Plus 9 today. W Plus 9 is one of my favorite stamp companies, and Don, the owner, is one of my favorite people, so this is a true honor. I'm going to be using some W Plus 9 stamps and dies to create cards with vellum panels. Basically, the top of this card on the front is just vellum, and it shows through the, to the striped paper inside. I'm going to also so, show some partial die cutting techniques and other things along the way. Let's get started by first creating that white piece that you see there. See how it's got a diagonal cut with a partially cut circle? We're gonna do that first. So I'm using this older die set from W Plus 9. This is a great set. It's got a lot of useful pieces in it. I'm going to use the large circle that has faux stitching on both sides of the cutting line. Now I have some four and a quarter by five and a half inch white cardstock here. I'm gonna put my die down kind of towards that corner that you see there. Now notice that I'm putting this underneath the cutting plate halfway. I'm tilting my paper so it's diagonal a little bit, which you'll see in a bit, and I'm only putting half of the die underneath that cutting plate. Anything to the left there will cut. Anything that's under the cutting plate will cut. Anything that's hanging out from the cutting plate, like to the right, will not cut because there's no pressure provided. So we're only actually cutting half of the circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this through my die cut machine and it'll put pressure just on that half of the circle. This is a fun way to get more out of your dies and you can do this with a lot of different dies. So there you can see that partially die cut circle. We'll cut the diagonal line in a little bit. I wanna do that one more time so you can check it out. I'm actually creating several cards today in this video. I like to create several cards at once. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing and I'm kinda of tilting my paper in here so that we have a diagonal going. Again, anything under the cutting plate will cut. Anything outside of the cutting plate will not cut. Again, I'm going to go ahead and put it through my die cut machine, and we have a partially cut die cut circle. This is such a fun technique to do. Okay, so now I have my trimmer, and I am going to cut the diagonal line around that die cut circle. So I'm just kind of connecting to where that die cutting um, stopped. If you do not have a trimmer like this where you can see where to lift and drop your blade to cut just parts of it, you could use a craft knife and a straight edge to do that if you wanted to. This trimmer is nice because there's a wire guide so you can see where it's going to cut. And I'm going to just cut a diagonal line right up to one side of our partial die cutting and then again after. And it just creates a nice diagonal with that partially die cut circle. Now it's time to do our stamping. I'm just doing some basic stamping here with some uh, heat embossed accents. So we're gonna start with the basic stamping. I'm using this beautiful stamp set from W Plus 9 called Happy Wishes. This is one of those great sets that you can build up in so many different ways. So I'm gonna start with the biggest image. I find that when I'm creating like a cluster of flowers, it's best to start with the biggest image. And I'm using some W plus nine inks today. I am a big fan of W plus nine inks because the colors are beautiful. They're like, they remind me of the colors of gelato when I used to visit Italy. They're just so beautiful. So this is actually the gelato color. It's a beautiful kind of raspberry color. And I'm just stamping the flower on three of our pieces. I'm gonna do some blue colors on the other two pieces. So here we have Little Bo Peep, I believe this blue is called. And I cleaned my stamp and I'm gonna stamp a few blue pieces too. So I'm just doing five cards in two different color combinations. Since I have the stamps out and I have the inks out, I might as well make a bunch of cards. I'm going to change the sentiments up between the cards too. Okay, now I'm coming in with a little like petal accent. Uh, this little petal, I don't know, was intended, it wasn't intended to do this to this flower, but I thought it'd be fun to add some petals to it. So I am just making use of all the tiny images they have in this fantastic stamp set to kind of build up my cluster of flowers. So I encourage you to try different things with all the pieces in a stamp set like this where there are lots of little pieces and see what you can create. Okay, now I have the Miami Spice color. This is a gorgeous color. And I am not taking the time to mask. You'll see that those flowers overlap, but they overlap so little that I don't think masking is needed. And these color colors also overlap nicely. It creates a really nice look. So I don't think you need to worry about masking. Now for the blue, that second flower was done with the lake house color. Now I've grabbed a green color and I'm going to add some leaves. Now with leaves, I like to kind of tuck them in to any little open spaces. And I like to have some on both sides of my flower cluster. So I'm doing the big leaves first and then we'll fill in with some smaller leaves after we're done. 
I will admit, sometimes when I'm creating like a bunch of flowers like this together, I'm not really sure how to position them just right. I have two tips for you. One, which I did today, was to practice first. I practiced this on a piece of scrap paper just to make sure I was with, happy with how I placed them all. That way, when I was actually creating these cards, I could quickly do them. Another tip would be to check the blog of the company because chances are the um, their, their design team has created some great samples with it. Or in this case, for example, Dawn from W Plus 9, she creates these stamps and she makes cards with them. So she knows exactly what she had in mind when she created them. So I like to see how she works with them and it can give you some ideas on how to make your card work perfectly. And by the way, if you're stamping it and you feel it's kind of off center, don't worry about it. You can come in with some of those smaller images and fill in those blank areas. Okay, here's another little tip. I need to use this double bud stamp, and I also need to use this single bud stamp. So I'm putting one on each side of my acrylic block. This allows me to save time because I can first stamp one image and ink it up and stamp it. Then I can flip that acrylic block over and stamp with the other one. And this just saves me time as I, as I go through and stamp a bunch of panels with these two little images. This is really one of the card designs I think is best to create multiples of since you're getting so many different little images out and a few different inks too. Okay, now this is where I'm going in with those tiny little flowers. There's a few tiny little flowers on the set actually. I'm just using one of them. And I'm just going in kind of filling in in any open areas. And I'm using a contrasting color here. This is that lake house blue color. I think it's just beautiful. And so you can kind of fill in any empty gaps. Now I decided that I wanted to do some heat embossing, so I used my anti-static powder tool there. I have some Versamark ink, and I'm going to do the little centers of those big flowers with the um, Versamark ink, and then I'm going to add some gold sparkle embossing powder. Actually, I use gold sparkle embossing powder on this color palette, and on the card that I used the blues, I used a silver sparkle embossing powder. Now you could use any embossing powder at all, or you could even use a gold or silver pen here. Now notice I'm going through and stamping the images and adding the powder to each of them and then I'm going to go ahead and heat set them all with my heat gun at once. This is another way to save time. While your gun is good and hot you can go ahead and heat set them all at once. Since I'm making five cards I decided to do a variety of sentiments so I have different things on hand. I'm using this fantastic stamp set from W Plus 9 called That Is All. Now the reason I really like the set is there are so many different greetings you can build with what's in the stamp set. She did a really good job designing this one so you can get a lot of uses out of it. I'm first starting by stamping and adding the embossing powder to the large word and then I'm going to stamp and add the embossing powder to the smaller words I'm stamping on top. I didn't do the heat setting between because this saves me a lot of time to just stamp and add the powder and then do the heat setting at the end. Now after doing this and looking at it, I decided I wanted a little more shine in my bouquet. So in the center of each of these little blue flowers, I'm using a quickie glue pen to just put a tiny little dot of glue. And then I'm going to shake on some of that embossing powder and heat set it. And that glue actually holds on that embossing powder. It's a great little trick and you can put tiny little areas. You could also use a Versamark pen for that. After completing my stamping on all five pieces, it's time to put our cards together. So notice that the top part of the card, that the top front of this card is vellum and it allows you to see inside the card. This is just a fun design to try out. For this technique, you want heavyweight vellum. I'm using 40 pound vellum here. You want something that's strong. And what you see me doing here is scoring in my trimmer and cutting this down. What I'm gonna do is create several little mini vellum cards. And they're four and a quarter inches wide and about four and a quarter inches tall. You'll see that vellum scores nicely and I'm gonna use my bone folder to make sure I have a nice crease there. This will be the top of our card. And this will get sandwiched between pieces to form our card. So I'm gonna create several of these and have them on hand for all five of our cards. To assemble our card, we're gonna sandwich those vellum pieces between some card stocks and some pattern papers. For the back of our card, I have two pieces. I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white card stock, and then a same, the same size but in pattern paper. This is just some old pattern paper that I have. I wanted this to show through the card. So I'm putting adhesive towards the top on the back of this pattern paper. I'm gonna put it inside of our little vellum card here. This will be the inside of our card. That front flap of vellum will be on the front of our card. Now we can adhere our stamped panel that we created before to the front of this. So I'm putting adhesive just towards the top of this, just enough to um, stick to that vellum that's there. So I'm gonna line it up with the bottom of that blue panel and glue it right to the front of this vellum. So now you can see the top portion of our card is actually see-through to the inside of our card. 
Now we have a card here, but we have all this ugly adhesive showing. So it's time to sandwich that vellum in between some other pieces of paper to make it look nice. So I'm going to flip my card over and on the back, I'm going to glue this piece of white cardstock. This is purely to kind of sandwich that vellum in and hide our adhesive. This also gives us a spot to write, you know, handmade by Jennifer on the back too. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that to the back. Again, that vellum is getting sandwiched between. And since this vellum is heavyweight, it's strong enough to form that top part of the card. Okay, so now when we open up our card, we can see that adhesive on the inside. So I want to cover up that area there and sandwich that vellum between so our card doesn't come apart. So I'm going to add some adhesive all to this open area here. And then I'm just going to take some white cardstock and put it right along that diagonal line. This is going to save me time from cutting an identical piece. So I'm just gluing this down onto here, lining up with that diagonal line that I can see through the vellum. And now I'm just going to take my scissors and cut anything that's hanging off from the front. Now I would recommend using long scissors for this. I couldn't find mine on my desk, I'll be honest with you. So that's why I'm using these super small scissors. But this is definitely better to do with long scissors. It's easier to cut a straight line here. So now we have a card that's four and a quarter by five and a half, but that top panel on the front of the card is vellum and it allows the inside to show through. Just think about it, you could do stamping on the inside of your card or whatever you want and that will show through the top part there. You could even use some thick acetate instead of vellum and it would show completely through. You could also do some stamping on that vellum or heat embossing so that kind of floats on that panel also. There are two final things that I did to finish off this card. I decided to round the bottom two corners only with a corner chomper, just to kind of soften the bottom edges. I also used my Wink of Stella shimmer pen to add shimmer to the vellum. I applied it to the vellum and then kind of rubbed it in with my fingers. And surprisingly, the vellum took the shimmer and it doesn't really rub off once it dries. And this gives you a gorgeous shimmery vellum. You can kind of see that shimmer there on the left corner. It's hard to capture in the video, but it really adds to that vellum. Okay, so there you have some tips for creating a vellum panel on your card and also having some fun with these gorgeous W plus 9 stamps and dies. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you'll check out wplus9.com.